So I just, since, since the theme is the relationship game, I thought we'd start with a little game. Um, I'd like to introduce you to three college students. Susan, Pam, and Mary, they're all graduating um, soon. And um, what I want you to do is just match Susan, Pam, or Mary to one of these three songs. Girls Just Wanna Have Fun by Cyndi Lauper, Wide Open Spaces by the Dixie Chicks, and Cry Me a River by Justin Timberlake. Now you can just do this in the head, you don't have to chat. I'll give you a few seconds so you can kind of form your strategy of how you're matching. Okay, you got it? You know who you're matching with the songs? Um, what if I told you a little bit more about them? The first is that Susan is just about to get her first real job, her first very own apartment. Pam just dumped her cheating loser boyfriend. And Mary just had her last exam, last all-nighter to study for the exam, and she did her last day working at the cafeteria. Knowing this about these three people, do, does it change at all what song you would maybe match to them? Yeah. Okay. It did for me too, but I put the slide together, so that was kind of a <laughs> giveaway. Uh, so one, two things, two key takeaways from this slide. First is Susan, Pam, and Mary are all millennials, and they have no idea what these songs are. <laughs> and the second thing is, the second you had some context, all of a sudden it clarified what it was that you thought they might like better, right? So that's kind of the whole topic of our conversation today is about context. And, you know, context just gives you that understanding of sort of a full assessment of the environment. It gives you the clarity of focus to know, you know, what is happening around, what's going on with this person's life. It's kind of a thing right now in marketing. Um, I'm sure all of you guys who are reading all those content marketing blogs have seen it. Uh, it's actually, you know, this is, I think this is from Mashable. Why context is king in the future of digital marketing. So you're sort of seeing it um, prop up. And I think a lot of times what you're seeing is really the advancement of technology is making a lot of this more possible for marketers. Um, and you're seeing things like, you know, geotargeting. So you're able to sort of pinpoint messages based on where someone is. You're seeing things like content targeting. So this is an example of the Telegraph website. Um, this is actually the travel section. There's articles on South Africa, and then, oh, you know, by coincidence, the advertising links next to it have deals on going to South Africa. You're seeing things like time targeting, marketers getting more sophisticated about when exactly they deliver messages and sort of doing tests around when is the optimal time to actually connect with uh, your clients or your audience. And you, this is totally me, Talbot's down here. Um, anyone who knows me, I'm sort of like from New England too, so. Uh, the retargeting, which are those ads that you go to, you know, you, you're at work shopping. John, don't listen to that. Um, <laughs> John being my boss. Um, so you're at work, you know, and then all of a sudden you go to back to another site and there's, you know, the Talbot's ad sort of following you around. So the concept of retargeting, or you might have seen something like social, local, mobile being sort of how people are defining context. Um, there's actually a book called The Age of Context where they're talking about things like, you know, airplane pilots being able to see through fog because the glass understands the context of its environment. Or, you know, the fact that, you know, your Bluetooth enabled toothbrush can report to your dentist on your oral health. Which kind of freaks me out because I don't really want my dentist. <laughs> I don't like to go to the dentist anyway, but like I don't want him knowing in between my visits what's going, what's going on. Um, so it's the, that technology piece of it's getting a bit creepy. You know, it's, a, it's too much. Um, and as marketers, I think there's there's sometimes that we can get sort of caught up in the technology, and you start with that, and you start thinking like, well, I could, well, I should. How do I use this? Instead of going back to some of the fundamentals, which is, you know, what is it about your audience that you're really trying to tap into? Um, and I know we, you know, the, the relationship era has been played out a lot today, but I do think that you can kind of get stuck in the, the digital piece of this, and you can think that it's about technology. And I would say that it's not. I think it's about a very human approach to communicating with people. Um, so I've taken a very decidedly different approach than Chris, who took an analytics approach. Um, and I love this quote from Leo Burnett. I'll let you guys read it. But 
basically saying that if you can't put yourself in your customer's shoes, then maybe this isn't right, the right business for you. So with that, I just wanted to say, I, I worked at a couple agencies earlier in my career, and one of the really cool positions they have there is an account planner. These are those fabulous people who are really smart. They go out and talk to customers. They come back with like this consumer insight that they give to the creatives, and everyone thinks they're brilliant. And I always wanted to be one of them. But I never was, because you know, there's, I don't have like the personality for it, and you have to be brilliant, all this kind of stuff. But, or at least that's what they tell you. And then you kind of find out that they're not. But um, I decided, if you guys will indulge me, I just want to pretend for one day. So what I did was, I actually went out and talked to a bunch of your clients. Um, I talked to heads of business development, heads of HR, and heads of product. And I thought it would be really interesting to sort of understand what their world looked like. I mean, how do they actually do their job? What's important to them? Um, and you might be asking, you know, for those of you who are at law firms, why didn't you talk to general counsel? I mean, every conference you go to, they talk to general counsel. Um, and I think sometimes that the business people get forgotten. Um, I was talking to Nat Slavin, who I know is here tomorrow, and he was saying that about 40% of his interviews are actually not with general counsel. And those individuals are sort of closer to the business, so I thought it would be interesting to talk to them. And they also contribute heavy, heavily to the growth. What I was looking at was, you know, what are their motivations? What does their environment look like? How do they make up their mind? And what triggers their behavior? So let's get some context. Um, I'd like to introduce you to William. He is the head of business development. He is in charge of all mergers and acquisitions. He is constantly on the lookout for the next big deal, what's going on. And as those of you who work at law firms within mergers and acquisitions, you know they're very fickle. He um, is sort of facts. He is the facts man. He looks at analytics. He's looking at market sizing. He's looking at profitability. He's looking at growth opportunities. He works in an environment that is no drama. I mean, they have like checklists and operation um, mechanisms for everything that they do. He is the type of person that is very plugged into his network, um, but specifically he's listening to things. He's looking to see what's going on. He's looking to see, could this be a next you know, big opportunity for our company? Um, he's also you know, the type of person who loves things like infographics or anything that has facts in it. Um, and for him, I mean, success looks like he wants to be the CEO of one of the companies that he's acquiring, and his position is very high profile. Um, so he's hoping that it will sort of get him to that next spot. So I guess, you know, sort of knowing some things about him, you could start mapping out what your strategy is for someone like William. You could start thinking about what information, how you're going to deliver, how he's going to consume that. And I'll just give you a couple little highlights here. Um, the first is, he loves facts. He loves things like infographics. He'd actually probably like it if you gave him just the raw data. Um, he will pull that information out and start using it to do business cases. He will sit down and read a full information, sort of information-rich white paper. Um, he follows a lot of people on Twitter. He doesn't, he's not necessarily involved in the conversation, but he's definitely listening. So now I have to stop for a second and, and confess something. Um, I've been watching this really bad TV show called Million Dollar Shopper. Does anybody watch that? Um, so on this show, they basically have these shoppers go out, shop for incredibly wealthy people. And the shopper sort of pull, pulls looks for their clientele. So I pulled some looks for William that I thought would, that he would like. The first is uh, Allen and Overy. They do a excellent M&A report every quarter. Um, the thing that I like about this for William is that it sort of breaks down the report into different chunks. So he can actually dive into things like um, industries. He can dive into geographies. Um, it is rich with things like infographic, um, like the one they have down here, which sort of, I actually sent this to one of the guys I interviewed because I thought he would like it. Um, it has all sorts of graphics. I also love the way that Alan and Overy use Twitter to sort of pull out 
some of those facts in what they were tweeting out because this is the kind of stuff he eats up. Um, he also follows some of the consultants within his industry and also the publications. So if I was targeting him, I would be maybe thinking about doing some targeted ads within those or at least following um, or introducing myself to, to the consultants. So that's my inspiration polls for William. The next is Jane. Jane is the head of HR. She works for a nonprofit, but is totally going through a transformation. Um, and she's been brought in to change everything. And that keeps her up at night, because she's not really sure if she can make change happen. She is pulled in six million directions, because everything that she touches, she realizes is an antiquated system, and it needs to be totally redone. She wants to spend more time on strategy, because she loves that, but she's spending most of her time on tactics, like what does our new policies look like? Do we have the right uh, you know, paycheck system? Um, she's very consensus oriented. She's very mm -hmm. tapped into her network. She, makes, she basically makes every, um, she starts every search process for a consultant by tapping into her network. Um, so she, that's where she starts everything. And you know, things for her, she works really closely with general counsel um, in her firm. In fact, I would, I would say that once the general counsel retires, she may take over that relationship. Um, she is an in-person per, you know, individual. You have to catch her by phone, coffee meetings, network with her. So you know, knowing that, you might start kind of mapping out your strategy for Jane. Um, the other thing is that she's been in this business for so long that she sort of knows where she wants to start or knows what she's looking for. In this scenario, you know, she starts with well-respected subject matter areas. This is the corporate executive board. Um, she might look at content there first. She would tap into her network or she would definitely read anything that she gets that's shared with her from someone that she trusts. Um, and she's not going to read long stuff. Like she has the attention span of a flea, so she's like kind of on to the next thing. So she just wants the highlights. Um, so my looks for her are um, the first one is really it's it's really interesting. There's a there's lots of LinkedIn groups, but there's a LinkedIn HR community um, that is incredibly popular, and they they actually ask each other quite a lot of questions. Um, and a lot of consultants will give feedback on sort of those questions, so that would be a great place to meet her and also interact with her. Um, I also like Deloitte's example down here. They have a human capital article that they put out every year. They have a cool carousel at the top that just gives you the executive summary, which she would read. Um, there is sort of a webcast portion, which I think she would probably give to her team. But then they also have a LinkedIn group of human capital enthusiasts. I know there's a couple out there, um, where, you, where you can actually connect with other people. So I thought that, that was really good for her. The corporate executive board, they must know that Jane is looking at this because she, uh, they basically published this global workforce insight. Um, but they have their executive director do a one minute video of the executive brief of that. So they just sort of give the, the key takeaways. Um, which is perfect for her. She would definitely like that. And then the last one was, um, this is really cool. So City and LinkedIn have partnered um, to create this channel whereby they publish out information um, for, for professional women. So this is something she would love. She would definitely be involved with that. And the last one is Matt Dreamer. He's the dreamer. He's the guy that comes up with the next great product. Um, you know, success for him when he retires, he wants to sort of have a patent under his name. He would like to go through an IPO. He's really involved with the legal process as it comes to the product life cycle. His environment is very dynamic, fast paced, um, very high growth. Um, he doesn't really need a lot of buy in when he makes decisions because uh, he, he's very strong willed. Um, but for him, like the things that keep him up at night are sort of competitive threat. Um, he thinks of himself as a thought leader, so he actually publishes a lot of content on Twitter. He also uses it to bookmark ideas. So just you know, a few ideas about you know, how you might map these things out for Matt. Um, you know, he's looking at sort of the big sweeping trends, market trends, client trends, technology trends. 
Uh, the interesting thing about him is that because he's in product, he has sort of an aesthetic eye, so whatever you produce for him has to be well designed because he does have a design eye. Um, and he travels a lot, so his iPad is basically his lifeline. It has to be something that he can you know, read there on, on the iPad. So a couple ideas for him. Um, the first is you know, publications like Strategy and Business are where he gets a lot of information ideas from. Um, but it would be a great place to either you know, have PR content or advertisements. They have this really cool interactive um, digital tool landscape that could be easily consumed on an iPad. Um, I also liked AT Carney. I don't know if you guys have looked at their site, but it is um, it has some really great content. I don't love all the design, but the content's amazing. And they actually have um, really well-designed articles, which I think would appeal to Matt. Um, they also make them available by iPad or Kindle, which would be great for him because he's on the road a lot. And then things that he's reading are things like eConsultancy, Seth Godin, Wired. Wired would be a great place to both target him and also be part of conversations. So that's sort of my you know, thoughts on, on looking at customers, kind of getting into their world, understanding what it's like to be them, what's important to them. But I think it helps you as marketers, it helps me as marketers. I've certainly been thinking about how I will be using this sort of plan for our marketing next year. But some ideas real quick. The first is you know, thinking about client profiles. I think that you could do 15 to 20 interviews, and you would start seeing trends. You would start seeing people who act similarly. Maybe they're not in the same you know, business unit. Maybe they're not have the same titles. But you'll see people who are analytical. You'll see people who network. You'll see people who are looking for big ideas. Um, you know, I, I sort of like the idea of creating these inspiration boards. I think you could use Pinterest to sort of capture those things and keep them collected for yourself. Um, then you can start mapping your content and delivery, trying to figure out how best you pinpoint your message. Align that with the buying process, which is what we saw earlier today with the relationship cycle. I think after you've done that, then you can start filtering in some of the cool technologies to figure out how do you, you know, specifically target people. Um, and of course, you know, test and refine, which I must say, like myself as a marketer, I don't do enough of, but. Um, you know, it's so insightful when you're able to actually have a hypothesis and prove it and change what you're doing. I did just want to give you this um, sort of interesting graph that I found, which was um, across the top are sort of business objectives, what the business wants. You could sort of put the relationship cycle along the top. And then along the side are what, the pro what your client's goals are. So I thought this was interesting because along the way, this person has mapped the different content that they will use to get someone to move to the next business goal. And I sort of liked this as a construct for organizing digital marketing efforts. Um, so you're sort of mapping what it is your client wants with what your business wants. And just to sort of end this, there's a great um, HubSpot report. It's called Seven Elements of Context Marketing. And ironically, I just got an email from them saying, we saw that you read your, we, you downloaded our context marketing white paper. We'd love to talk to you. Um, but I think that, you know, sometimes you can get so caught up in the technology that you forget it's just marketing. It's what you do anyway. It's just personalizing your business for your audience. And that's it.